Hey friends, welcome to Musicpreneur 2022. My name is Michael Whitaker. This video is all about making money in the music business. I mean, we talk about how to make music all the time, but we don't talk about how to make money. And so uh, this video is chock full of successful people uh, from the sync world, from the YouTube world, from music production, from film scoring and even motiv the motivational side of things uh, to just really spark uh, and motivate you to be the best you can be this year. I know I went back and watched this and I was really blown away by the content and it just motiv motivated me to uh, really get my act together and, uh, and improve myself in different areas. So without further ado, I hope you hit that like button and the subscribe button and we'll get right into this video and uh, hope this content helps you well i i wanted to start out by saying that um that i think with with what we're talking about today i i'm gonna do an old trick my friend ronnie doss does and he puts on a new pair of glasses and this pair of glasses is uh it represents the filters that we walk around uh, with in our life, right? So we all have a perspective of, of our education, of that we have a filters of friendships, we have a, a filter of our work ethic, of our belief systems, everything that you are and everything that you've come to be and, and the amount of um, success you've had is because you're walking around with this set of filters. And this set of filters, you've, you've learned a, a lot of stuff, but in 2022, I think what I want to uh, kind of um, help you to maybe grow in it, and all of us to grow in is how we can put on a new set of filters and, and what can we learn this year that is going to take us to another level because somebody has learned something more than you've learned and has, ta and has, uh, has their set of filters that you can you can easily learn well maybe not easily it's going to take hard work but you can definitely learn and get a new set of filters um you know they say insanity is doing the same thing you've done uh over and over and expecting a new result and even deeper than that is doing something over and over and um and getting the same result that's even more insane so if you if you're doing the same thing over and over you can have a certain level of success but doing the same thing over and over uh without learning anything is going to get you the same level of success you've already had so our base level has to be making learning uh the the biggest thing i think in our life and that's why we're here today right to learn some new stuff and to get inspired because there's no silver bullet that I can say, or anybody here who's successful can say, you do this. If you do this, you'll be successful. The, the truth is that you gotta, you gotta put on some new filters, you gotta learn some stuff. And if you commit to that, then you're gonna be successful, right? So um, that was my little motivational speech up front. And hopefully that's the that's the that's the background and and i can i just tell my story a little bit and then we'll get into some questions with these incredible people so 2020 uh, uh 20 what when covid was 2020 started right and yes. so when covid happened guess what all my work went away just about and not only that i got <clears throat> prostate cancer so on top of it um i was worry you know i was thinking i was you know potentially uh gonna be you know what was gonna happen to me you know and so what i did was i took that time i actually went back to school for coding and uh because <clears throat> i thought well gosh if music doesn't come back anytime soon i've got to have some other skill because i have no other skills in life um so i went back i did seven months of coding school. I graduated in the top eight of 200 people and um, <clears throat> discovered that I hate coding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I did was took that knowledge and I've been able to take that and start a business 
that is called filmscoreseminar.com. And that business, after uh, utilizing the skills I had learned um, to go alongside with the skills I had in music, um, really has been uh, great. I mean, it, the first month, I think we did $20,000 in the first month, which was insane. And so, um, you know, the point is that I, I didn't know anything about it. And I took the time to learn something and incorporate it with the skills I have. And um, the, the, it's, it, it's created a new source of income for myself. And so that said, um, <clears throat> first question for everybody, and I guess we can just go around and jump in when you want, is uh, let's talk about what it, what it means to be a, the mindset of a successful uh, musicpreneur or to have your own business. Um, you know, we talk about having a product, whether you're an artist or whether you have, like Jim, you're selling samples or Andrew, you're, you have a YouTube channel, Terry doing licensing. Uh, everybody has a product. So um, what would you say to uh, your mindset um, that you have to have? I think you have to have a proactive one and not a reactive one. You have to think ahead, plan and collaborate. And I think that, you know, um, it's with any kind of business, whether it's music or not, you really have to be aware of what's going on in your industry and the world around you. I've found that in the music industry, networking is really key. Meeting all of you today is, I think, a really a real blessing. And I'm really can't wait to hear what you have to say. And I've got, you know, three new friends and they've got me. And with that, you know, if we need something, you know, we can really connect with one another. And I think that it's really important. I know we haven't been able to do in person, but there are so many opportunities online to connect with people. And the other thing is that an entrepreneur educates themselves and what they don't know so that they can move ahead. And they need to, they need to be able to make sure that they have those, those skills. And, mm -hmm. and Andrew, what happened with you and your YouTube channel behind me is a logo called live at studio 507. That's my dream. And I'm going to do something quite similar to you, but not about studio gear, but something along the line of meeting uh, artists in their studio all around the world. And yeah. we are in the storyboard stage and I'm really excited. And so to, I can't wait to hear the rest of your story. And, um, you know, this is how things start to evolve. And Terry, you travel literally, I mean, you know, pre-COVID especially, you, yeah. a good part of your year is just networking around the world, right? It's cool. I do a lot of speaking internationally yeah. and my clients are all over the world. TF1, the major network of France, um, Atres Media, the major network of uh, Spain, um, you know, uh, all different types from composers, songwriters, to production companies, to broadcast networks, and even some societies. We represent the German Music Society for their interest here in the, in the U.S. And uh, we did the same for the French and the Belgian for over six years. Germany, we've been working with Gamma for over 10 years, just helping them understand our market and being able to be, uh, you know, a conflict uh, source for conflict resolution. And the thing that um, with COVID, I will tell you that prior to COVID hitting, we moved to uh, Tennessee because we wanted um, a different perspective than what we had, a different life. And I knew that I had to grow. You stole my quote about uh, insanity, you know? <laughs> I love it because you really have to break out of it and do something different. And so um, we built our house. I started to travel again the beginning of, uh, of uh, 2020. And I was sitting in a hotel room in Stockholm when the borders closed. And I was there for an international music conference and thinking about what the promise of the new year would bring. And wow, you know. And, and, and so, Jim, you talked about your time and what you got to do during, you know, your COVID vacation. Well, I did, I did a lot as well. And I, and I really relate to that. 
you know, I, I think that uh, spending your time wisely uh, when you're given a gift, because I looked at it as a gift in my life, mm-hmm. settled a new home, opened a new office and a studio and have opened up different lines of business. And hopefully I'll be as successful as Andrew in my, my video podcast and, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, be as uh, illuminating as Mondo with his uh, encouraging words to, uh, to do better. Awesome. Thanks, Terry. Uh, all right. Anybody else want to jump in on that one? Uh, the mindset of a, uh, uh, of a musicpreneur? Sure. I, I don't know if anything I say is going to be of value to anyone. I think it mostly <laughs> applies to me, which is kind of the advice, um, you know, for whoever's s- suffering enough to be in the room with me when I give advice. Uh, I think just like being self-aware of a few things like what are like, what do you want? Like what's f- fulfilling to you? What do you want to spend your time each day doing? anyone's like me uh if if i have to do something that i don't want to do uh it's probably not going to be very good and uh i'm i'm kind of like a different person when i have to do things that i don't want to do um definitely less fun so i i think if you can at least understand like what it is that you really enjoy and like that exploring and learning isn't work to do yeah um like if you can like for me you know the video was kind of a uh it was an accident it was me being ignorant or or arrogant like hey i I know audio um vid is video like can't be that hard to learn you know it's probably the same thing in a lot of ways and i was just like miserably wrong but what I had was the curiosity about it. Like I have with audio. Mm-hmm. So figuring out, you know, why can't you see my face when I film myself or why does it look, you know, or, you know, all these different things and then solving at least one problem every time I do something each day, even if it's, That's really you know, good. it's not yeah. perfect, but just solving one problem a day over 365 days. Like you look back, And you go, wow, that was terrible. I'm way better now, (laughs) you know? Um, So just having some self-awareness and leaning into your strengths and just incremental attainable improvements is what I, the only way I can do anything. Amazing. Good. Awesome, man. Anybody else? Mondo, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. I'll offer some. Um, I love what you said, Andrew, uh, you know, what is it that you want to do? Right. Um, I think there's a second part to, to what and Jim kind of went through it, but the way I heard it was, it's not just deciding what you want to do, but also figuring out and uncovering what are the things that's going to empower that. Okay. If, if I want to be a producer or I want to be a whatever, um, what, what are the skill sets that are going to help you scale what you want to do? And typically those things are uncomfortable, like Mike coding, mm-hmm. right? Okay. <laughs> that's your example. Um, I think that's a, a, a phenomenal thought process to, or a path to go down as an entrepreneur, a musicpreneur is to, you know, you identify what Andrew was talking about. What do you want to do? Right. But also, you know, Talk to others in your network, as Terry was talking about, or discover what are, what's the fuel behind the car. Like, I want to be a car, but what's going to move the car? Well, I don't know. Well, you're not going to go far. What You have to find that thing that's going to fuel it, right? So, and typically what I've found, and I think all of us would attest to, is that it's something outside of our normal skill set. It's something we have to acquire or something we have to learn, to Andrew's point, that's going to empower the thing that comes natural. Right. It's usually something that we that we have to acquire or learn or grow or get uncomfortable learning or doing that's going to empower the thing that we can do in our sleep. Yeah. And that that's what I will offer to that question, Mike. I think that's phenomenal, Andrew, what you what you mentioned. It's not always fun. It's mostly not fun, even even when well, you yeah. Yeah, yeah. The non-fun stuff is what empowers the fun the, the fun. 
You got to go to unfun first. If that's even a word, Terry, is that a, unfun? Is that a word? I don't know. Well, I, think, I think it's called work. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think this is a good transition to ask Jim a question actually. Um, okay. So Jim, so you started this whole business, right? And the truth is, I think it, it comes down to all of this stuff. There has to be a need. And so you, you need your client, whoever it is, you need to fulfill a need in the best way you possibly can to your client. Andrew, you fulfill a need to YouTube subscribers, to producers, because they learn a lot. You know, uh, Terry, you you fulfill a need by managing people's uh, uh, rights and royalties and, and all that stuff. Um, so, Jim, how did you, uh, from the standpoint of you saw that there was a need and um, and you developed that? Um, um, how did how did that play into what you're you're doing? Well, um, I th it's interesting that you say that because, yeah, for sure that. I think when you really get lucky is when you identify a need, whether consciously or unconsciously, or you stumble into the fact that something you do happens to fulfill a need. I think it's more that for me, I'm just a super keyboard nerd. And um, it really came out of a couple needs. Actually, I was staring down um, a, a completely empty tour calendar summer of 2019 so as a musician, you know, the obvious question is, how am I going to put food on the table this summer? And um, so for years, people had been asking me, you know, you, you're, you're so good at creating sounds. And, it's, you know, I've always developed my own sounds. I'm, I'm never satisfied with, you know, stock anything. I've got to get in there and manipulate it and make it my own. So on one hand, you know, that's it's something I've always done. But uh, so here's this catalyst, the, the idea that, Okay, how, how am I going to pay the bills? Um, at the same time, I've got people saying for years, "Hey, would you ever consider selling your your sounds that you've created over over all these years?" So a, a light bulb went off, and I thought the answer to that was always, "I don't have time. I, there's no platform. There's no mechanism. How would I do that?" Well, all of a sudden, there was a hole in the calendar, and so I had that motivation, and I started uh, just looking at at what's out there. And I did a little research and found there's two or three companies that were making a killing selling main stage expansions. And, um, you know, so I just got to thinking, you know what, maybe that that's the thing. And, and come to find out that several major touring acts like, um, Toto and, uh, Billy Joel's keyboard player, they're using main stage exclusively. So all the pieces kind of lined up. And by the end of that summer, I thought, all right, I'm going to put the entire summer into this and it's either going to sink or swim. And worst case scenario, I know I'll sell at least a couple dozen copies because I've got a pretty decent, you know, following on, on Facebook or whatever. But um, it really was a process of being passionate about something. I think that's a, a key ingredient too. It, nobody's going to buy whatever you're selling if you're not passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, I, I love watching Andrew's stuff uh, because he, he, number one, he's having fun and he's obviously passionate about it. And that, that's, I think that's a big ingredient to his success. And I think it was the same for me. Um, it was a case of, I came along and, and particularly the worship market, which ironically, even though I, I play for Michael W. Smith, that's his world. Um that's not the kind of music I listen to. I'm not drawn to that particularly. I'm, I'm a big synth pop and uh, orchestral, you know, film score. That's, that's kind of what I listen to all the time. But anyway, I saw the need in that market. These guys in the church market, those sounds are typically horrible that these guys use. They're just cheesy <laughs> and lame. And, and I thought, okay, I can, I can parlay my experience with Smitty doing this at, at a high level for 25 years and say, here's what I've done. Here are my actual sounds. Here's my virtual keyboard rig. You can have it. And it worked. And um, it's, you know, we've slowly been developing a, a little niche following. And, and but yeah, I, I think it's, it's all the above. You know, it's, it's finding a need, but also being passionate, being fun and engaging and, and you know, definitely entertainment value, um, all that stuff. It's all part of the pie. Yeah, that's really good. Um, 
what uh, here here's here's a uh, an interesting uh, question and that is people that have been doing this a long time i feel that and that aren't having success whether they're an artist or or whatever they're trying to do um i feel like one of the biggest things you have to ask yourself is is what's not working and uh what it what has to change with what i'm doing because it's not working i i you know respectfully I, I i respect all the artists that are putting their heart and soul into their music right but at the end of the day if you've been doing that for 10 years and you've really been working at it and only your family and your friends like your music and you want to be a success you have to ask yourself well i i have to change like because this is not working you know i have to maybe collaborate with somebody that can change my sound and and you know at the end of the day um whatever it is you're trying to do if it's not resonating with your client if your product is not resonating with your client then you need to modify or change your product so from that standpoint can i get um some maybe some feedback on things that you've had to change and uh things you've had to do to have success i think mondo that would be a really great qu question for you because you've been through a lot you know in your life yeah. and uh, i think your your book even goes into that right um i, I think I, I love that question mike uh I, I consult a lot of uh individuals in the music business that are trying to figure out that question right there how, how do i get it to work i just can't get over the hump one of the one of the common things that I see is that a lot of individuals forget the second word in what we're talking about music business. They forget the second word business. They stick on music, creativity, their art, which is phenomenal. That's the product, but they forget about or don't pay attention to the business side of it. At the end of the day, it is business, and I think a lot of creatives they they fall in the black hole of, well, my art is gonna make room in the market for me. No, no, your, your art necessarily is not going to bust down the gates of opportunity in the market. Sometimes you have to adjust, you, we all know, you have to adjust based upon what the market is calling for. You have to, like Mike said, you have to solve problems, give them what they want versus what you want them to have, mm. even though they don't need it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's literally looking at, okay, well, you want to be in a music business. Well, what's your business infrastructure? You are running a business. And I think a big part of it, those who've been around to answer your question, Mike, for a long time struggling, getting over the hop is, is uh, what I think it was Andrew that said about um, self-awareness, right? Being honest with yourself. Where, where are you, first of all? And if you, if you're not getting over the hump, that's okay, but there's ways to figure that out. It's going to what Terry was talking about, networking, asking questions. Mike, you know, I will ask questions to the day is long, bro. I, I will ask questions, 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 because I want to know. But then the big part of it, I, I, I feel, for people who are watching this, is learn business. Learn business. Literally. Like, business. <laughs> That's the, the basic foundations of it. It's if you want to scale in business, you have to learn business. You don't scale in music to scale business. Don't you scale in business to scale it? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, there's this massive disconnect. And I think where um, a lot of us, a lot of art, I was guilty of this, man. As a producer, I would think that my art, my mm -hmm. tracks, my sounds, my this and that would make people want to put me in the market. That was not true. That was not true. And it, I had to figure out what was the market calling for and how can I serve the market? Oh, and then while I'm doing that, I need to build a business infrastructure. And there's a lot of details in that you guys know. You guys are all successful business people. So it's, it's, uh, there's, there's just that reality, man, that you know, if you want to be in a music business, you can't just focus on the first word. Focus on both. Yeah, Mondo, so, tell uh, we've talked about this before, but uh, yeah, uh, talk about the networking as it pertains mm. to that. Oh man, look, it, Mondo <laughs> Terry, is a networking master. I will say that. Man, T Terry's gonna shout when I because this is I can tell her wheelhouse, obviously. Um, 
networking was a part of my job. I made it a, a part of my weekly week like process. I was intentional about it. It wasn't a thing. Oh, I heard there's an event going. No, no, no. I'm looking for events. Hmm. Oh, such and such asked me to coffee. Well, it's not always reactive. It's proactive. I asked these seven people to coffee this week. I put it in my budget to pay for the coffees and the, and the meals and different things. I, I went to workshops and conferences or concerts or whatever, uh, showcases, you, because I was looking for it because I knew that if I was around more people, it was increasing the opportunity for me. Right. I decided out of sight, out of mind. You know, I knew being a studio hermit as I was at one point, you know, I thought like, man, everyone's going to know how awesome I sound in here. If I just stay in here, keep cranking it out. Everyone's going to know how awesome I am. No, it didn't work. I had to get out. And so I made it a part of my, um, my, my weekly regimen to go out and network and be very, very intentional. And I saw my business started scaling. I was getting asked to do things when people had problems they needed fixed or paid attention to or whatever. They said, Oh man, I just saw Mondo with that thing last week. Let me call him. See if he like, I'm constantly in the front of your forehead. Right. I think 95% of things I get hired for are people that I have friendships with. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I mean? People hire their friends. There's too many talented people on the planet, you know? So, yeah. And Terry, you're also the the queen of networking (laughs) on a global scale. Well, you know what? You know, if you want a global business, you have to be out there in the global market. Um, and you talk about networking. Um, I, I started a long time ago involving myself in organizations that bring music people together on a regular basis. California Copyright Conference, two-term president, longtime board member. I met so many people in the industry in Los Angeles just by joining that one organization. Then I have been involved with the Association of Independent Music Publishers on a global basis as the national chair, and I am currently the LA chapter president. And also with the International Music Publishers Independent Forum, I'm their vice president. And that reaches all of the international independent music publishers because that's my space. And if I want people to know that I'm, you know, here on the planet and I've put my shingle out, whatever country and city I'm in, you know, the only way I can do that is by participating. And that, you know, you talk about budgeting for that. It is something you have to budget both time and resources because it's not just me, my team in all locations work toward this. Michael, now he's been on, he's he's been on a few different adventures with me. NAPTI, yeah. you know, the National Association of Television Program Executives. I ran their music track for several years and I had Mike there and we brought Tony Scudelari from Sony Pictures Television. And, you know, we worked on teaching people, you know, what works and doesn't work in scoring and why you think the way you do. And from a studio perspective, from a licensing music supervisor perspective, you know, these things get us out in front of people at Natu is about being in front of content creators. I'm going to be exhibiting at MIP TV and Cannes and MIPCOM in Cannes this year. And, and I've never exhibited, have always been a participant, now I'm exhibiting. And that's because I need to make sure that I am there being able to capture as many visitors and attendees as possible. And it's right outside the VIP you know, lounge so I can take prospective clients in there, have a talk, and it's like doing a masterclass every time I engage someone. Mm-hmm. But when I do, they understand first that business, they can make money with the music in their content. And second of all, I can help them in the creation of that music. My company's moniker is create, protect, and collect. And I will tell you that the one thing that is going to help, you know, artists in this industry is, is understanding that you have to protect that which you create. So understanding business, Mondo's 1,000 time, you know, correct. You really need to have an understanding. Do you need to be an expert? No, that's why I have a job. So thank you for being just someone who generally understands and makes great music so that I can help you protect that globally and collect the revenue. And also, you know, you, you, you talk about both words, music business, 
that that also calls to build a team because we are not a hundred percent knowledgeable in every area. Right. And that team has to deal with, you know, in business, your legal, your financial, you know, yeah. um, I'll, you know, there's so many different areas and then creatively, you know, where do you go to get gear? Who do you collaborate when you're trying to build your library? If you're good at one thing, like one thing Mike does really well is he is so killer in doing trailer music. That's big, that's old, that's old, orchestral and all of that. But he's always thinking, okay, so what about pop music? And what about, he's thinking different areas that he hasn't done as, as much to add it to his portfolio. This is, this is what's going to make the difference. We're working on a catalog or, together. And those are the things we're looking at those areas where, where we have that hole, you know, and, and, you know, it's, it's amazing. It, I, I think that um, to have that mindset and, and understand uh, what you need to do, you need to, you need to know that music and business do go together and that you don't have to be an expert in the business, but get that team and have a general understanding because you make my job easier when I'm able to say you have royalties because this aired here and you did that there. And I licensed the music here and now it's going to all these different areas of brand new opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's good. Anybody else want to jump in? Jim, you got anything? <laughs> what do I? Yeah, I'm just soaking it up. <laughs> right. Jim's got some flashing green lights in the background on his keyboard. I know and that's I'm, just I'm distracting me the whole. Time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm it's mesmerized awesome. by how great your, your set is. Know, so um, the the only thing I would add is um, I might have a a unique or potentially relatable to some other people uh, perspective where I. You know, I came up in commercial studios as an assistant engineer. So I was doing sessions 361 days a year, you know, with a different client every day. And my version of networking was whoever's in the room with me because I can't leave ever. I'm just, it's one day it's this client and their producer and their, you know, team or who I manager. Um, and I did that for five years straight and it was, it was amazing. But um, when I worked there, I did not care about networking at all. Uh, I was also in my early twenties. I was in a band and I was in LA, so I didn't care about much. Um, but, uh, eventually I realized that I wanted to get married and have kids. And then that started the path of like, Oh, you know what? There's some things that I want. Yes. I like, I want to make music. Um, I'm really interested in that process, but like, it's gotta be a hundred percent on my terms. Like I don't want to be in a van on the road and I don't want to be away from my family. And I, you know, I want to be able to go to work and then come home and spend some time with my family. It was a huge part of sort of where I went. And, um, you know, it's because I was in a control room for 16 hours a day, you know, for five years that I realized like, this is a lot. Um, so, uh, I was not super keen on the networking side of it. Um, I think cause I was a little burnt out. And, uh, so when I moved to Nashville, you know, I was like, I don't know anyone here. <laughs> like, what do I do? And so I, I tried to think of, um, you know, like, well, well, what do I, what, what do I enjoy? Where do I get information and value? And, um, how am I literally break down my day as it is, you know, what am I doing today? And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time, uh, any time that I could like between sessions or anything. And if I wasn't with my family, I was watching some sort of YouTube video and I had channels of different topics. Some were more financial related, some were more, uh, I don't know, uh, creative related, like video production and stuff like that. And just trying to be like aware of, man, I've been watching this channel for a year and this guy went from 70,000 subscribers to 2 million subscribers in one year. And he's making, and, and he, his videos are about cameras. I don't even care about cameras, but some reason I watch every video of his, there's something interesting going on here. 
and uh, I was getting value from it. And it, whether that value was literally just a laugh, like one moment in a video, um, and I didn't understand anything else he was talking about. I just thought it was fun to watch. Um, I knew everything about that person and everything that they were doing and their projects. And I, and it was like coming along to their journey. Right. So that was a big, um, one aspect of why I decided to make content, you know, videos that I put on the internet. Um, how long did it take you, Andrew, to get when you started your YouTube channel? Cause I mean, that's a legitimate thing. Uh, and, and I, I feel like YouTube is the best advertising today you can possibly have other than word of mouth. Uh, YouTube is the cheapest and you know, the best way to get out there. How long did it take you to get where you are today? And because you monetize it now with Sweetwater and other companies will pay to put their products on your, your site or do videos. And uh, how long did that take you? I think it's different for everyone. Um, for me, I started, I uploaded my first video in June 1st, 2019. And it was then, I, like I had done a month of prepping of like, how does this work? How do you use music in a video? You know, so like, let's say two years from now, my channel gets monetized. How do they not claim the music in the video? Like that was, a, I wanted to figure those things out before I started. Um, so I sort of went through the list of like, how can I make a video that at the very least I would watch because there's a ton of people who are, look like this, have headphones and a, a mic in their face and they're making YouTube videos that I would never watch just because it just doesn't resonate with me for some reason. Um, so I, I needed to figure out how I could do that uh, in a way that it was at least interesting to me. And so I sort of just crossed off a list of like, okay, you can join a licensing website and you can find sound effects. You can use this stuff. You can do titles. Like, how can you make interesting content? Like, if I make a video talking about quickies, it's inherently uninteresting. So you have to be you got to be creative with making that interesting because somebody's going to need to figure out how to like hit, like to punch in on logic, you know, like someone else is going to be curious about that at some point. So if you can make it interesting, then maybe they'll subscribe and so on and so forth. Um, so anyway, I think my perspective is, is if you can figure out how to share what you're doing, whether it's with your business, your company, your music as an artist, as a producer, as a creative, whatever you are. Um, if you are just, if you just do what you're doing, but you find a way to capture it and then share it, just upload it, try to make it interesting. If you have time and, and you can make it the best thing you can just consistently put stuff out there. Every, my, that was my first part of this was like, how long does it take to make a video? Like, does it take that long? You know, I broke it down like, okay, I think I can make one video a week. If I spend one hour a day, seven days a week, I can make a video, even if it's not good. And then theoretically, 52 weeks later, the video will be better. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was where I started and I had no plan on what I was going to talk about or how I was going to do it. There was, you know, mimicking other YouTubers that I really liked, like Casey Neistat was really impressive with how he put his videos together. Cause they were like very kind of rushed. Like he'd set a camera down on a shelf and he would just like walk up to the shelf and it, it was not, uh, it was very story oriented. So it was easy to like just binge 20 videos of his and you're like, Jesus, I gotta, stuck. I gotta get off YouTube. Um, and, but I recognize like, Hey, this is, is there's something he's doing here. That's keeping me just bl blasting through these videos. And I tried to just take things from people that I liked and, you know, figure out how to do it in a sustainable, repeatable way. Ah, right so that there, could... that right there. Just stop right in that sentence. S say what you just said again. I just, I took what? Just finding out how to I do took it little pieces of yes. things I like from people that were having success and yeah. I tried to do it. And I think that is an amazing thing you just said. And maybe you didn't even realize how profound that is, but that 
is it in a nutshell, right? It's like the learning process is finding somebody and it's, it, I, I'm transitioning because we're, we're low on time, but sure. um, to uh, a, a mentorship type thing. Um, and I feel like everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs a coach in life. And uh, I feel like Terry was actually uh, quite a mentor to me, actually, uh, just learning. I used to go up in her office and ask her questions at Fox Family. <laughs> um, but everybody needs somebody that's that's in the next step um, above you that will tell that will give you a straight straight answer. So if you want to know about sync music, if you want to know about like whether your song would be good for a TV show or a promo and what's the difference and what do they look for? Like I'm probably a good person to ask for. Terry's a really good person to ask for that because we kind of live in that world, you know? And so, um, you know, the same, same thing. You want to learn how to, you know, be a live touring guy. Jim has done that forever, you know, and Mondo also like you, you want to know how to start a business and be successful and meet people and do a network. And, you know, the mindset of being su successful, like he'd be a great guy to approach. Um, it's just, um, who do you guys look to uh, and, and where do you find your source of learning? Um, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're down to about 10 minutes. So just make it quick. Uh, any, any thing you, you feel is val valuable from books to, um, you know, any tips you might have. Yeah. You go first. Me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So right. man, I, I'm just sitting here like a sponge. You've all said some pretty profound things. Uh, Nando, you, you touched on, the thing that I think most musicians are guilty of, me, me included, focusing solely on music, forgetting about the fact that, hey, you, if you want to do this for a living, you, you know, there's, there's other things you, know, you got to concentrate on. That's huge. Um, I learned a ton from Andrew when he came down and you know, shot yeah, my studio video back in March. I felt like I went to school. I mean, we, he was here for what, four or five hours maybe, and, and we ended up in my kitchen. My wife was asking him questions. It, but and he just touched on something too. Uh, and Michael, I'm glad you stopped him there. The sustainable thing, you know, you, you've got to find something, you know, that you're passionate about, that you're good at, obviously, but it's got to be sustainable um, or it's not going to go anywhere. But, but as far as who you look to and, and inspiration, obviously, if you're a musician, I, people always ask, in fact, I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me, how do you get started in the music? There's no answer to that. I, I don't, there's no formula. Um, obviously you've got to be talented, but the, the, the only answer I ever know how to give is, are you listening? Are you listening to what other people are doing? Um, and Michael, you just touched on it. I mean, the, the, the old quote, you know, good composers borrow great composers steal. Um, John Williams has said that, you know, mm -hmm. you, yes. you have to, yes. uh, you know, I mean, the, you know, in the film score world, you know, all the all those guys, Hans Zimmer. I mean, we, we've all talked about it. Um, there's no such thing anymore as an original idea. It's all been done. There's only 12 keys to work with on a keyboard. Every melody has been written. You know, it's 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 a matter of are you saying something new and that's that's you. And it, I guess that's a whole other topic. But just that idea of yeah, are you listening to what other people are doing? I spend so much of my time just listening even if it's in the background while I'm doing other stuff, um, you know, what's current. And, uh, but the stuff you guys are talking about, it, it's, I, I've often felt like a late bloomer, you know, just because I'm, I'm definitely good at the music side, but man, we, I gotta be better about being, you know, a networker and a, a business minded person. Musicians generally aren't good at that stuff. We're not good administrators. Um, we're, we're typically good at just being creative, but that's just part of the, the process. And it's not going to get, there's a million talented people out there and nobody knows who they are. So, right. so true. I need to talk to these people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mike, you, uh, you said, um, you know, where, where do you go for inspiration? One of the things that um, I have 
I recently applied for was leadership music. And I don't know if any of you know what leadership music is. It's, it's an amazing um, organization. They have it, you know, leadership medicine and, and all, you know, leadership legal, they have all of these, these um, different types of programs and it's for senior level executives that are, are at a point where they could benefit from learning from one another. And, um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to get in and I'm currently in leadership music and being in a room with 35 to 40 people who are, there are no wilting flowers in the bunch. They are all, you know, the head of music for major studios, for DSPs, for, for um, you know, uh, uh, Grammy award-winning songwriters, producers, and, and, uh, and, you know, it's just, you, you quickly, you know, kind of uh, position yourself as to, gosh, how do I measure up? And I walked in there going, I am just going to learn everything I can possibly learn. And for yeah. the entire year, starting in October, every month, we are exposed to from 7am to 730, a program on a particular part of the music industry, whether it be live music, whether it be business, whether it be, uh, you know, publishing record, um, you name it, everything that this uh, label day, I mean, everything that you can think of, and you think, oh, you know, I know publishing, I know that wow, the, the different perspectives that you get and the people that you get to interact with. I am learning by, by being around people who are similarly situated to me that are in different parts of the business. And it's, you know, yeah. you don't know what you don't know. And wow, have I learned that there's a lot that I don't know. And I'm glad that I'm being made aware of it. But that's where I'm getting what I need at this moment through that, through that. And it's like a fraternity. Once you're in, you're in, right? So if you all haven't applied for leadership music, do it. Is it, it leadershipmusic.com? So uh, yes. And, okay. and you have to apply by uh, February. I think okay. I, I can't remember what date in February. Um, and also too, I have people in the industry that um, have been a great mentor to me and Doreen Ringer Ross the head of film and TV for BMI was my first boss in the business. And she told me what I needed to know, not what I wanted to know. And, and I, I, I'm so thankful to her for helping me. And, and I still draw on her wisdom today. And so, you know, it's really, and Mike, you know, Mike, you have been a mentor to me with my studio. I've never had a recording studio. I wouldn't have had it unless I had your support in your help in what is the proper gear to get? How, how should I position, you know, um, all of the, you know, sound, um, you know, uh, I don't Panels. see, I don't even yeah. know all the words, <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. But, you know, the things to, to help the acoustical tiles, just everything and just the right gear. And, you know, at a studio, we had millions of dollars to spend on studios like we did at Fox. But now this is my own and I don't have that kind of cash, but I want to make it something where, where, you know, creative people will come and create. Yeah. And I, I just, I learned a lot from you and I'm still learning from you. Well, and so you. I thank you for that. Um, our, let me, let me cut it because I want to end this at seven and, and be respectful of your time. And thank you guys for coming uh, on and being a part of this. Hopefully we could do some more of these kind of things. Yeah. Um, uh, real quick, Mondo, where where can they find your book? I think it's on Amazon, right? And what's the what's yeah, it called? It's on, it's on Amazon. It looks. I'll show you. Can you see it? Oh, oh, there it is. Awaken the Spartan within you. Okay. The seven disciplines. Seven disciplines to build the confidence and the mindset of a Spartan. So you can find it on Amazon. I'm buying it. Oh yeah, that's good. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, I'm gonna take you to coffee now, man. See, thank you. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's step it up to dinner. I'm buying one okay, too. Right, cool. I, I'm buying oh, one too, man. Nana. But I just got an espresso machine, so put me hook me oh, up with the milkshake. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. Uh, Jim Daniker, where is where is your uh, your socials? I know you have a YouTube channel too. Uh, yeah, just Jim Daniker. Just yep. Jim Daniker. Uh, yep, and then Facebook, Instagram, all that. It's all and, Jim and, and it's not spelled with a U R like Andrew. No. But... <laughs> no. Okay. D A N E K E R. Oh no! <laughs> Did I screw that up? Yes, no, but I learned a lot from you, Andrew. Almost. So it's okay. <laughs> oh, you got to tell me. It's not still like that, right? Uh, it's all good, man. Terry, I of course you. you. 
Yours is Real uh, Music Works. And that's uh, R-E-E-L-M-U-Z-I-K-W-E-R-K-S. Real Music Works. Real Little Music play on Works. Words. And I'll put that in the comments down there. Thanks. Um, so everybody can see. And Terry, you know, Terry and I also have a music uh, library slash catalog that we work on together. So if you are an artist, we definitely want to hear from you and hear what you have and how, how we might be able to bring it to the sync world. Um, and Andrew, we know yours is Andrew Masters on YouTube, right? And AndrewMaster.com or? Just you just go to YouTube and watch videos if you're bored. Just yeah, just just go to YouTube <laughs> I'm and make do that money. tonight. I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> All right. So uh, the final little thing is Terry and I are going to be working on a project and um so all this stuff we're talking about, music business, uh, licensing, the legal side of music, um, you know, how publishing works, how you get paid on Spotify, how you do all that stuff. We're putting together a program as well as we're going to build an app that's going to allow you to do all your project management and, and do all this kind of stuff to help you goal plan uh, uh, for your, you know, for the music business. And, uh, because if you're on the no plan plan, that plan is not going to work. So, uh, <laughs> this nope. is going to be really awesome. I'm really excited about it and uh, awesome, I'm going to put it, you guys won't see it, but it is musemap.com M U U Z map.com. We have a splash page up. So if you sign up today, actually you don't, it, it, we don't want anything, but We'll, we'll notify you when it comes out and you'll get a discount um, just by uh, putting your name in there so we can contact you if you're interested at all. Um, the other thing that I have going, if you're interested in music for film and television, um, filmscoreseminar.com. I have a full program on music for uh, music composing and um, helping you, uh, me personally helping you uh, to get where you want to be as a composer and producer. So uh there's my selfless plug right there i'll just leave these up um but anyway thank you guys it is seven o'clock on the dot which is unbelievable yep. uh that we we hit it and uh, thank you all my um my friends who tu tuned in and uh, we had a nice little crowd watching tonight so that was really cool and uh we'll see on the next one i'm going to try and do something every sunday night so just watch um and wow. um you know, hopefully you'll get some value out of it. All right. Thanks All right. a lot. And I'm going to end right, the you. live stream. Great uh, to meet you guys so much. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year to you as well. Happy New Bye. Year.